Killershaw, 32 years old. Cody Garbrandt just turned 27 last month. Garbrandt, the taller man by an inch and a half, but it's Cody Garbrandt, or excuse me, TJ Dillashaw, who will have a one and a half inch reach advantage. Now to get you the introductions for this main event, here is Bruce Buck. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission, Commissioner John Carbelli, Executive Director Andy Foster. Our three judges scoring this contest in Octagon side are Derek Clearly, Guillermo Bravo, and Michael Bell. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the Octagon, Herb Dean. And now, for those in attendance and UFC fans watching around this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live from the sold out Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Bantamweight Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a freestyle fighter holding a professional record. 11 wins, one loss. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Sacramento, California, presenting the number one ranked bantamweight contender in the world and the former UFC champion, the challenger, Cody Nola, the prize. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, a bang Muay Thai fighter, holding a professional record, 16 wins, three losses. He stands five feet six and one half inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds, fighting out of Angels Camp, California, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC bantamweight champion of the world, TJ Dillashaw! All right, gentlemen, we've been over the rules. Protect yourself at all times follow my instructions. We're gonna keep this clean. Touch gloves and let's do it. TJ willing to touch. Cody says no thanks. To quote my man Joe Rogan, this place is definite right now. What a pop for Cody Garbrandt. The buzzword for Cody has been adjustments. We'll see if he made the requisite ones in advance of this rematch with the Bantamweight King, T.J. Dillashaw, and we are underway. Garbrandt takes the center of the octagon in blue. T.J. Dillashaw in the black and gold, befitting a champion. These boys are smiling at each other before the fight started, man. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of man. jabbering gonna go on back and forth. T.J.'s giving him a big grin, dancing around in front of him. Oh. Can we have a fight like the one we just saw? Oh, <laughs> can I take it? <laughs> Get the defibrillator. <laughs> Get it ready. Dillashaw embraces fight week to such an extent. He's smiling because there's no place he'd rather be than fighting another man in an octagon. Especially this one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he just loved the fact that he was able to stop Cody in that first fight, and he's been grinding that salt into the wound ever since. Garbrandt has said repeatedly this week that speed is the biggest factor in this matchup, that of all TJ's skills, the one thing he can't come close to matching is Garbrandt's speed. And in the build-up, you notice Cody Garbrandt trying to be a little more calm, a little more patient, trying not to lead with his emotions as he did the first time. He's also throwing more kicks, like right away. And again, not to belabor this, but when Cody went into that fight with a bad back, it changes his stance. It change oh. Nice counterattack by Dillashaw, but Garbrandt lands a good right hand. 
Still a shot of the body. Garbrandt misses on the spinning attack. And Cody said when his back was at its worst, he said it was hard to even visualize himself in the octagon. Oh, good shot to the body by Cody. Front kick to the body. He's throwing way more kicks this time. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh he hurt him. He just hurt TJ. But TJ landed a counter. They both hurt each other, I believe. Wow. I think TJ might have hurt him with that right hand. These as boys well. are fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Dillashaw, a faint heavy attack here early on. Garbrandt points down to the center of the octagon, says, meet me there. A lot more kicks by Cody. They've made an adjustment for sure. Dillashaw has built his own camp in California. Little slip there, Garbrandt time to take advantage. Counter right from oh. Dillashaw. Oh, oh, oh he him. got him again. It's the same mistake as the last time Garbrandt made. He goes in there trying to finish, and TJ counters. Garbrandt fighting hands, trying to recover. Two minutes to go in the round. He's doing a good job of holding on to TJ's hands. Hammer fist from Dillashaw here. Garbrandt back to his feet. We'll see if he has recovered. His legs are still a little wobbly. Dillashaw with a big mouse under that right eye. There's plenty of time here. Dillashaw wisely gets that left guard up. It's when they get into these long exchanges, TJ hurts him. Cody still hasn't recovered fully yet. Yeah, he still looks wobbly. Cody's looping, trying to knock TJ out, whereas TJ is a lot tighter in there. Another Here right again. Garbrandt nearly out on his feet. Oh. Big right hand! Oh, TJ Dillashaw gonna close this out. Garbrandt trying to recover! A warning from Herb Dean for a shot to the back of the head. Garbrandt in a world of trouble. Oh. Big knee! Oh, it's it! TJ Dillashaw! as to who is the king of the Bantamweights, and you might be looking at the greatest 135 wow. pound fighter of all time. There's no question. And he's finishing him. He's the greatest. He's finishing fights. He is finishing guys, and he did it faster this time. He knocked him out the second round the first time. This time he did it in the first. Wow. In terms of the striking differential, in terms of the numbers, that was Dillashaw's biggest advantage, the biggest discrepancy between these two fighters. Dillashaw, the harder party to hit, and he connected early and often tonight as he hands Cody Garbrandt a second consecutive loss after he began his career 11 and 0. Wow. How's your heart? Oh, man. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> Let's take a look at it again here. You see him both land here. Right hand by Garbrandt. Boom! Right hook by TJ. Both go staggering back. But look at this. That's the problem. Cody Garbrandt is loading up. You can see him loading. And TJ's just a little bit tighter. And once you're hurt in front of TJ Dillashaw, it's over, man. You cannot afford to be on wobbly legs in front of a guy like this that knows how to finish because he will find the shot that will close the show. When he couldn't finish Cody here, he landed that knee. Watch him right here. He's beating him up. He's beating him up, trying to find a kill shot. That's not working. Soon as Cody turns, TJ goes tight clinch knee. It's over. At this point, Cody Garbrandt's done. I know he didn't go to the ground, and he wants to continue to fight. Right. But that's because he's a fighter. Fight was done. Great stoppage. Look, all hard Cody Garbrandt. But T.J. Dillashaw was the better man tonight. Herb Dean seemed to give him a lot of opportunities to stay in the fight. He chooses to intervene there. And T.J. Dillashaw reigns supreme in this rivalry yet again. The official decision. Here's Bruce Buffer.
Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest at four minutes, 10 seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by TKO and still the undisputed UFC bantamweight champion of the world, TJ Dillashaw.